Hello. So I have just received a lot of messages on or questions on how to tonify or calm the central nervous system. And I love that this is becoming a more popular question and it makes sense to me because I think our society is actually becoming more and more a place that is can be damaging to our central nervous system. So the first thing I want to talk about is nutrition. If we're not hitting nutrition properly, we can't really expect our central nervous system to function properly. We need to give our body the nutrients that are necessary to balance everything that it needs to balance. Without those nutrients, we will suffer, whether it be central nervous system, our mood, our neurotransmitters, which literally are made from the food we eat. We have to give it proper nutrition. In terms of nutrition, I think that a higher fat, lower carb, way of eating is optimal to support your central nervous system. There are other things though that can help aside from nutrition. Think of the term fight and flight or flight and fight, whichever way you say it. When you go into that mode, your body, your body literally sends blood to certain places in your body because it thinks that you want to run from a bear, at least in the flight mode. And so you will have blood sent to your limbs, your arms, your legs, your and your brain, primarily. So in those moments, exercise can be really helpful. You're gonna have a buildup of blood in your legs. So doing some body weight squats or going for a run, doing a sprint is a really good way to reduce the negative effects of stress. And it's just going to help your body become more resilient. And so the next thing I wanna talk about is eustress. Eustress is good stress. The more eustress that we have, the more resilient we can be to regular stress. It literally changes our homeostasis so that we are physically, our, our physical state, our metabolism, even mental state is more readily prepared to face stress. And so exercise is a eustress. Other eustresses are cold therapy and heat therapy. So sauna and cold showers, or just dunking your face in a bowl of ice water is pretty much the same as cold immersion. You will have a longer effect from whole body cold immersion, but you will have the same effect, just less time with dunking your face in a bowl of ice water. And this has been proven. Another thing that you can do is just splash cold water on your face. That's a great way to instantly lower cortisol. And that is something that I have done for a long time. Even when I was healing and dealing with the dawn phenomenon very often, I would splash cold water onto my face because I knew that I was having heightened adrenaline, heightened cortisol, and I really felt a difference. Another thing I want to talk about is why are you in flight and fight mode? Is there trauma behind it? Do you need to process that trauma? One, we have to confront it, and two, we need to process it. If you don't do that, it will just reside in your body. Trauma can store itself. It does store itself. Um, very often we store stress or trauma in our hips, in our neck and shoulders, and it's really important to work with someone or confide in someone who can help you to process this trauma. Writing my book was major trauma processing. <laughs> that was very difficult for me and I had to take months in between writing to take a break and just allow myself to heal again. And so it's really important to process the trauma that is causing you to be in this state in the first place. If you are living in an environment that puts you in that state, maybe reconsider how can you better cope with this and can you get out of it? If it's something like, you know, your job is just horrible, you've had issues with it for a long time, maybe it's time to look for a new job. Not to say that if you don't love your job, you should quit it. A job is a blessing and we are called to do our best with what we can. But if it is causing harm to your physical health or mental health, it might not be a bad idea to reconsider. And so consider these situations and environments that are putting you into that state. Affirmations. That's another one that I want to talk about. Affirmations are not just feel good tools. Affirmations are using the process of renewing your mind. Brain retraining is kind of a hot topic right now. I get a lot of questions about it. In my honest opinion, I'm going to make another video on it is that it's just putting a label on something that God created and putting a price tag on it. Brain retraining is the process of renewing the mind, which God commands us to do in the Bible. We are to take his word, which is the truth, and renew our minds to the truth. So any negative thoughts or just overwhelming thoughts that come into your mind, almost like darts, like an attack, we are to use the word of God to take those thoughts captive and make them obedient to what God's word says. 
that was a huge part of my healing journey. I did these affirmations by Charles Caps. It was, it felt like a joke at first. It felt like I don't really believe this. And that was challenging for me. It challenged my faith. And reading and speaking these truths out loud over myself made me realize I need to work on my faith. I need to work on my belief systems because I've been living in fear for a long time and it's not getting me anywhere. And so I had to confront those negative thought patterns and belief systems. And that was hugely beneficial for my central nervous system because I was no longer walking in fear, but I was walking in faith. I had confidence instead of anxiety. And that was huge. Nutrition is a big part of all those things as well, supporting your neurotransmitters, but just the dialogue that goes on all day, the stories we tell ourselves are powerful. We need to confront these. We need to be responsible for them. Mindfulness, practicing mindfulness, practicing being present. So often when people struggle with central nervous system, feeling wound up all the time, anxious, even ADHD, one of the main issues is just that we have distractions all the time. And when we are not confronting the root of the matter, we just get lost in, this, in the noise of it all. And so practicing mindfulness and being present simply just means being present. So you could just sit down. I love to do it outside because there are lots of things to pay attention to in that present moment, like chirping birds and the grass and a flower blowing in the wind and just things that bring me peace and calm my central nervous system in general. But you could do it anywhere. And it's just practicing observing your surroundings, observing yourself. You could do a body check where you're scanning your body. So basically you think about, okay, are my shoulders tense? Is my stomach tight? Are my hips tight? Are my legs tight? Are my knees tight? Are my feet tight? Are my toes tight? Are my fists tight? And you just practice letting go and becoming mindful and drawing awareness to those areas of the body. And all of a sudden, things start to come more quiet and it just feels better. And so mindfulness is a huge tool, especially in today's society where we are constantly flooded with distractions. Everyone's always on their phone scrolling, right? <laughs> I don't care where you're scrolling. It's just distraction. It's taking you away from the present moment, putting the phone down, unplugging for a significant amount of time. As much as I'm on my phone for my job, I don't scroll. I just don't. The only times I scroll is when I'm looking for like audio to use for reels or for content. But that is something that I've just, I've drawn a line in because I don't want to, I don't want to be at the end of my life thinking, man, I wish I hadn't wasted so much time just scrolling and not paying attention to the world around me. So mindfulness and being present is huge. Another really important part is your support system. So this kind of was touched on when I talked about your environment, reassessing your environment. If you have a poor support system, if you're living in an environment where you are being discouraged and put down or even abused, obviously that's going to send your central nervous system into just havoc. And so it's really important to have a good environment and that can be difficult. And so if your home environment is not optimal, then find online communities. That is one of the blessings of social media and everyone having a phone these days is that we can confide in people in other countries and we can find community. I have been speaking in the Steak and Butter Gang and I've really enjoyed it because of the community. I love being able to see other people's faces, see their reactions, you know, ha have them ask questions one-on-one, -on -one, face to face. And yeah, we're not in the same room, but it's still very powerful. It's just comforting, honestly, and, and inspiring and motivating to know that you're not the only one. And so everyone needs a proper support system. You can find that often very, very often in churches. Sometimes you have to try multiple churches before you find the right fit. Just know that not every church is perfect. There is no perfect church because people are not perfect, but God is perfect. And confiding in God is what got me through everything so that I'm here today talking to you. You need an anchor. Boundaries. So when you do establish your support system or your communities, don't be afraid to set boundaries. Boundaries are healthy. If you're not setting them, then people will be crossing them eventually and that is going to be very stressful for you and your central nervous system. When you establish boundaries and you're not afraid to do so, it's like it's like setting aside a defense before anything bad happens. It's like saying, this is how I function and this is how I am supported. I'm setting a boundary to be a healthy boundary. And so what are boundaries for me? I get so many que uh, messages, questions 
I love to help people as much as possible and I will answer your questions if you send me a message. But if I ever get a nasty message or if I ever get someone hounding me and they're like, you know, how dare you charge people to help them when it's a situation where it's like, I really need to troubleshoot and know you better. And you know, someone's cursing or, or what about the people who said that I caused my own miscarriage by working out when I was pregnant? Those are boundaries that I set where I say, this is just never gonna go anywhere good. There are certain types of people who all they wanna do is fight and all they wanna do is be nasty. And I don't even think it's always a person that's the problem. I believe that we fight not against flesh and blood, but, a bit, but against principalities of higher powers. I believe that there's so much spiritual warfare going on. And so most of my boundaries are set when I see that I'm not fighting with a human. This is a spirit trying to attack me. And if it is a person, then just like, no, I'm still setting a boundary. You have to be able to do that in real life, even though those situations don't happen as much in real life, but definitely social media other boundaries for myself. I don't look at, I don't look at things and I don't listen to things that are bad for me, that are wicked, that are ugly, that are not aligned with God's word. I do my very best to filter that. And, and that's a boundary that I set in my life. One, because God tells me to, and two, because I know that it makes a major difference in what's good for me because God knew that. So I don't, you know, I don't watch certain things. I will not, there are certain songs on my workout playlist that, you know, they don't have any words, but I know that the band is demonic and it's something I didn't know from before. And so even though it's a really catchy tune to work out to, I will not listen to it. And that's a boundary that I set because I'm trying to honor God. And so we all need boundaries in our life in so many different areas with nutrition, with relationships, with what we consume, not just food, but social media, listen to, watch. So all those things are really important to consider. Last one I wanna talk about is alternate nostril breathing. So this is something that I've been doing for a long time. It's one of the quickest ways to get out of a panic attack. It's one of the quickest ways to tonify your central nervous system. You're gonna make the hang loose symbol. You're gonna plug one nostril and breathe in. Switch at the top and then breathe out. Breathe in. Switch at the top and breathe out. If you keep doing that, like it's already working, it is one of the best ways to bring down your central nervous system. If you feel like you're going into fight flight mode, if you're having a panic attack or you feel one coming on or you're nervous, I even do it in between sets at CrossFit. That is a great tool and it works immediately. So I hope that this video helps someone out there. I'm sorry if you were hoping for a supplement or some crazy biohack that can just totally like transform your central nervous system. And the truth is that's what I gave you. These lifestyle, practical, free tips are transformative if we actually take the responsibility and, and have the accountability to stick with them and optimize them. And I am living proof of that. I was a walking panic attack. <laughs> so bad. My central nervous system was a wreck and I never did pay anyone to do brain retraining. I used the word of God and I did what it said and I practiced some of these things and I just realized that I can do this. Maybe the number one thing is just the realization that you're not a victim and that you do have control over this. You have a lot of control and and if you don't think so then that's a lie because there are I just spent 15 minutes talking about things that you can do to improve the state of your central nervous system. And so let that sink in. I hope that it's encouraging. And if you have any other ones that come to mind that help you, leave them down below.